Welcome back to Dialogue Editing Part 2. I told you we we're going to look at tools that are used on movies to make your dialogue sound better, and we're going to begin that with two very basic, basic tools. They're not actually software tools as much as they are tools for us as sound designers. So one of the biggest things you're going to do is make sound work from one camera take to the next. For example, let's just say we're in a room, and you, it's production, you've got your shotgun mic pointed at one actor, you get their lines, you swing it the other direction and get the lines for an actress, but behind her is a window. And outside that window could be traffic or an air conditioner, things like that. You lay those side by side on your timeline and the background ambience is wildly different. And so even though there's an array of tools to deal with that, like gates and expanders and EQ and voice isolation, something you're always gonna use is room tone and fades. And we're gonna look at that with a couple scenes from Reckoning because you don't want your audience to be distracted from one take to the next. So let's take a look and see how it's done. And so we're gonna go back to where we left off at the beginning of Reckoning. And we already set our volume here when he says no and then screams Rose. But you'll notice on the timeline I have some gaps in the audio, so that's dead silence. That doesn't work. We have to have some kind of consistent room tone. Well, in this specific scenario, I had to ADR his lines. The production audio for this no and the yell wasn't very good. And so I already did that. I, we're gonna talk about ADR later, but I already placed the new audio in, but it's in chunks and I don't have the ambience from the cabin. And this is just one example of how getting room tone during production is very important. I mentioned that during the production training. So did I get room tone for this scene? Fortunately, I did. So I'm gonna open my media pool to scene two, and I have it right here. Normally, I have a lot more bins. I said this already, I think, in the other lesson, but I had to move part of Reckoning to a quiet SSD drive so I could record these lessons because my rate array is pretty noisy. So anyway, here's scene two. Here's my cabin room tone. So double click on that. I have it up here in the preview. There's no WAV files that you can really see because it's so quiet. I'm just gonna mark an in and an out and I'm gonna drag that down to my Dialog 3 track. I keep the room tone, even though you could maybe consider it as ambience, I keep it with my Dialog because I'm using it to patch and repair Dialog issues. Okay, and the other thing, besides the gaps in the audio here, the other thing with ADR is it's not going to have the background ambience at all. ADR is typically a very, very pristine, clean background. So here's what we do. I'm gonna take this to the very beginning of the scene. Just put it right there, and then I'm gonna extend that to the end of the scene, right there. And I would zoom in and get it exact, but I'm not gonna waste the time with that now. Something else you need to do is check your room tone because there's inevitably gonna be some sounds that you need to be aware of and remove. In fact, I'm gonna crank the volume up so I can hear it a little better and play that. Okay, it's pretty clean. What I would do is listen to all of this, and if I had any issues, I would fix that. For example, let's just pretend there's an audio issue right here. I'm gonna set that back to the default level in Inspector by clicking this. Okay, so let's say right here there was a bang or something. I would literally just cut that bang out, remove that with the delete selected, and then do that, and then add a crossfade. I can just right click and add a six frame crossfade. Now something to know about crossfades, if you listen to this, you can't hear it very well, but it the sound dips down on that fade. I don't want that. So I'm gonna grab this little guy and move that up so the volume stays more consistent. So now I've got the ambience going. However, even though this background is clean, it's not going to be completely invisible. So I don't want to hear when we jump into these certain audio segments. So what I'm gonna do is use fades, and fades will save you with this stuff. I fade on my dialogue all the time. So I'm gonna bring this all the way to right where it starts, like that, and here we go, and like that. Awesome, and I could do the same thing. These are, let me unmute these. So that's him breathing, and I would probably keep the breaths on the closer camera shot a little louder. And I'm not hearing any offending sound come in, even though I don't have fades, but let's just play it safe. I can't see the waveform, so remember you can do Command Option and scroll. And there we go, so here are the breaths. So I'm just gonna fade this. In fact, 
let's move this down to the other track and I'm gonna see how long I can take this. Okay, we can go about that far. And this, okay, so what I'm gonna do is kind of try to do the same amount of fade on each one of these. Like that. That's gonna help this be seamless from one to the next. And this background ambience is different than my ADR. This breathing is not ADR, so I'm not gonna necessarily do what I did here with this right here, but you get it, okay? In fact, I'm gonna extend this as far as I can and then do as long of a fade as I can. Cool. Now I'll do Command Option R to put waveforms back. And remember, that's not adjusting volume, it's just the graphical waveform. Beautiful, okay. So not that there's nothing else to do with this dialogue, in fact there is. There's some distortion in this yell. And in another lesson where we're going over an equalizer, I'm gonna show you a really cool way to find distortion and get rid of it. But that's not for now. What I wanna do next is look at another scene where I have an actual conversation between two people and I also didn't get room tone, so we're gonna see what we can do in a situation like that. So let's go to scene 12. It takes place in a bedroom with Rose and Addie Crane. And here's the audio. So you can see I've got missing chunks here. Why is that? Well, remember, when we're picture editing, we are pacing our scene. And it's all the time that another actor is running over another actor's lines or just saying their line really fast where you might want to have a pause. And so you'll end up with chunks of dialogue because there's dialogue right in these spots that you can't have based on how you've cut the scene. And so then again, this is where room tone is so important. But even though I know I need it in the chaos of production, I forgot to get it. So what do we have to do? Well, in this scenario, one thing you can do is try to find some quiet spots in existing dialogue and then build some room tone from that. So what you literally have to do is sometimes look through your entire audio clips for take after take and find a usable chunk of room tone. I already did that for scene 12 and I have it over here. So here it is. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna right click on this and do create new timeline using selected clips and call it scene 12 room tone. Now I'll hide my media pool and take a look at this. All right, it defaulted to a stereo track. I'm gonna change that and let's look for some silence. And this is what you have to do. You just have to go through and sample until you find something. Okay, here we go, I found a small chunk. So what I'm gonna do is cut the clip, delete all this, and then paste the clip in. And now I'm gonna jump back to the edit page for what I'm gonna do next. It's easy on the edit page to just copy and then paste a bunch of chunks of audio in a straight line. Now, we need to listen to these together because sometimes a piece of audio will sound quiet, but when you do it back to back, you'll hear a repeating noise. I see, I hear something that's a little off there. So what I'm gonna do is delete these. So I'm just gonna trim these a little bit and try that again. Okay, that sounds good, right? It can be hard to find this. This is why room tone is so important, but we've got it. And so now we've got a big chunk, but we can't work with all these individual clips. So what we need to do is we need to bounce this to a single file. So this is gonna require us to go into our project settings. Here's why, let's just jump in and go to capture and playback. And down here under capture, we need to set our save clips to location. It's gonna to default to your computer and you don't want that. So click browse, go to your film, and then create a new folder. And again, you're gonna have a bunch of other folders here. This is not my normal data drive. I'm gonna create a new folder called bounced audio. And typically I create this in my audio folder. And then click open. Why is this under capture and playback and all this complicated stuff? Well, back in the day, like when I first started filmmaking, cameras were recording to tape. It wasn't all file-based like it is now, and it was a huge pain. You literally get all of these tapes as the editor and have to stick them into a deck and in real time capture them into your editing software. It took forever, and you could run into problems if there's problems with the tape or the deck, etc. Huge nightmare. Those days are all gone. And so that's what capture's about. You're setting a capture location to save clips to, etc. And so this still applies with things like this when we're 
creating a new audio file from these clips. So I'm going to click Save. So all we've told it is when we bounce this audio and create a new clip, save it to that folder on our data drive. Now I'm going to go back to Fairlight. Now we need to draw a range around these clips. So I'm going to go to Range Mode and just make sure I get them all. And now go to Timeline, Bounce Selected Tracks to New Layer. Go back to Pointer Mode, and there we go. Beautiful. Now we have a long chunk of room tone for scene 12. I love it. So now we need to switch back to our movie off this sequence. And if I go to Media Pool, there in scene 12, you'll see that bounced file. I'm just going to name it something less cryptic. And now I'm going to drag that in to Dialog 3. Now, this drawer open, I have that down on my Foley sound. For example, if I solo that, so this is production sound. It does have its own room tone, so I don't need to have any room tone right here in this dead space. So I'm going to start right here. Now, I'm not just going to lay room tone under the entire scene because this is actual production room tone and this production dialog has that same room tone. It's not like the ADR we dealt with in the first example. So in the first example, I just laid room tone all, under all of it, but with this, we have to be more meticulous. So I'm going to zoom in, and this is where our fades really come into play. I'm going to take it as far as I can, do a long fade, and then bring room tone to that point and fade that. And then on this, that's as far as I can go before I run into other stuff. Fade. I'm going to cut that room tone and put a fade there. See how that works? So now these gradual fades easing in and out are the same and it should keep our sound consistent. Peacemaker. Now I heard a little difference, right? Peacemaker. A little bit. Why would that be? Well, one reason is because even though this room tone was from the same scene, the shotgun mic was pointing a certain direction. And so maybe with her take, the ambience is a little different. Maker. Careful. So it seems like her background is a little quieter. And so I'm going from her take to her take again. So I'm just going to lower the volume of my room tone a little bit. I can always go highlight that and go to Inspector to fine tune it with more finesse. Maker. Careful. It's okay. What I'm going to do is put a longer fade on the room tone so that we don't hear it disappear until she's already talking. Does that make sense? Because if I fade it before she's talking, we hear that drop. If I do it underneath her dialogue, Careful. It was a little better. And a little disclaimer as we're going on, going along. I'm really trying to get sound through to you in these lessons in video format where you can hear differences that I'm talking about. But sometimes that won't come across the way I'm hearing it in here. And also when you're a rookie sound designer, your ears won't pick up on everything quite as fast. And that's completely normal. My ears are still rookie ears compared to legit sound designers that do it all the time for a living, okay? So just know when I'm giving specific examples, if you don't hear the difference, A, it could be the lesson video, or B, your ears are just getting used to things. And don't freak out, just try to focus on what I'm saying because that's what you need to learn. So that worked. Lowering this room tone matched her room tone a little better. And again, why is that? Probably because the room tone that I got had the shotgun mic pointing a different direction than her direction. And for example, if that's the case, it may have been pointing towards Rose. Let's check Rose's dialogue out here. Um, oh, no. That's still Addie. Oh, where is Rose talking? Three. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So let's look, listen to Addie's. Even help. That's super quiet background. Here's Rose. Really? Hear it? Hey, let me pull this down for a second. I'll extend that. Three once. Really? Really? Gunslinger. Gun. I'm sorry. I need to mute that one. 
Yeah, hear that? So that is, or that was the problem. But with that, what other problem now do we have to deal with? Sure, I was able to cleanly go from Addie's dialogue and fill this gap with room tone, but if Rose's dialogue is louder, that means I'm going to have to make room tone between these two takes work. So let me give you a couple tips. Let me find her dialogue. Bet. Okay, there's Rose talking. Bet his sergeant wasn't too happy. Bet not. Big difference, right? So the first thing we're gonna do, as you know, is we're gonna put some long fades on. And let me see. Okay, I can't go any further. So there's stuff there, so let me undo that. And let me make those a little bigger. Okay, Addie's got some more. So I'll put a longer fade on hers to kind of match that. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a piece of room tone. Here's an unused piece. Let's get rid of these fades. Okay, and let me make sure, I think this piece was what we were lowering for Addy. Let me just see if the volume's, oh no, the volume's zero. Okay, I could hit reset here to get it back to default, of course. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to ease in on the room tone. In fact, this long fade I just did on Addy probably wasn't necessary, but we'll just leave it. So we need to bring the room tone in while Addy is speaking because if I try to fade it in any other way, we're gonna hear it. And the goal is for the audience not to hear a thing. So I'm gonna take this room tone right up to the edge of Addie's dialogue. Bet his sergeant. And I'm gonna fade it. So that when Addie's done talking, we're at full room tone level. Bet his sergeant wasn't too happy. Bet not. So I still heard it come in. But one reason for that is because I have it doubled up here. So. I need a match. In fact, let me just get rid of this fade I did on Addy. As it may not be helping us. Okay, so so I'm matching the room tone fade in fade out here to the fade in on Rose, okay? Bet his sergeant wasn't too happy. Bet not. Still hearing it. So that's it's tough. It's really tough. So let me just bring this fade in a little more. Okay. Burr. Bet his sergeant wasn't too happy. Bet not. So it was a little more gradual there, but it's gonna be a fair amount of work to make this scene work well without distractions, and that's what you have to do. You have to get this to a place where the audience listens, or you listen to it, dialogue only, and you don't hear any changes in the background that are noticeable. So again, if fading under dialogue doesn't work, then you might have to lay room tone down under some of the quieter tracks. However, there are some other tools that you can use to also remedy this situation. So if you're dealing with this right now in your movie, you know, keep watching the lessons because I'm gonna show you some other tools that can help. But this is an example of how to build room tone when you don't have it, and then how to use that in between your dialogue to make things sound good. Because you don't, you wanna be able to listen to this and not hear any background changes that are noticeable. If you didn't have any room tone that you could build, maybe there just wasn't any usable audio, which can happen, then you're gonna have to go to a sound library or record your own room tone in a different location and kind of make that work. And what you might end up having to do is lay it under everything and then adjust volume in between to, to make the gaps work. So you have to be creative. This is why room tone is so valuable. Now, let's take a look at another piece of production sound that is just not good. At the beginning, when the guys are on their horses, listen to this. I heard it. This way. Horrible background sound. I, I truly am out in the forest. There's old Seminole Indian trails here. There's a cabin built by Daniel Boone in this spot. But on this horse trail, there was a road or a stream nearby or there was wind in the trees, but it just, that's filmmaking. You don't know how noisy the world is until you try to make a movie and get clean dialogue. So in the next lesson, we're going to start looking at some other tools that you can use to clean up your dialogue. If this stuff excites you, if you are an aspiring filmmaker, check out Write and Direct, my online film school. It's writedirect.co. I promise you, it will save you 
thousands of dollars and maybe thousands of hours on learning the craft of filmmaking. It teaches you development all the way through post-production. And you might think, hey, I just want to direct movies, and that's fine. But when you're first starting out, you have to know how to do it all unless you have millions in the bank to pay people to do it all for you. And so knowing how to do it all helps you move your career forward and pursue your dreams without being reliant on technical people because you don't know how to do it and you don't have the money to pay them. RightDirect.co, check it out. And if not there, I'll see you here on the channel very soon. Oh.